I get to speak uh, and rehearse uh, my way of speaking as a politician. Here my topic is, and in the future, you know, I'll deliver more speeches, but this is the first one. Thank you very much for the opportunity uh, that you've given. Black Vision is for liberation. We should all be black feminists. A black feminist statement published by the Kumahi River Collective is one of the bases at which I begin my speech because the statement foreshadows the main theoretical themes that would have developed in black feminist thought over decades. Here the writers of the statement reflect the extent to which the intersections of gender and race could be bases at which movements and their gender and race dynamics are concerned. I learned this at a time when I am growing up as a young gay man in the modern society with complex issues and subjects that I need to understand and respond to. These issues pertain to which are concerning gender. They will always be a concern to me because my sexual orientation or identity group is one of those that is marginalized under many circumstances which are affected by the intersection of structure, societal levels and expectations. Well, there could not be any difference to the degree to which we cannot align black queer and black feminism in politics. We share common struggle in the society. Therefore, it does not mean that when I am a black queer, I cannot be a black feminist. There are profound elements of black feminism at which could be a good benefit to a society, and these are informed by personal experiences of the people who know and believe that black feminism is the way and the future of our society in order to alleviate patriarchal attitudes. As a young man, there were several intersectional elements that were very informing or had shaped my previous thought about modern black feminism and the intersection of gender, race, economy, sex, and class. My understanding of black feminism rises from my nurturing and environment of my childhood, youth, and young adult life in South Africa. Yeah, my family. This is where I come from, ladies and gentlemen. This is my home. Ifi Amadjimbe, Atu, Tadu, African woman voicing feminisms and democratized futures, supplements my core understanding at which black feminism is gender, I mean in general, could mean for an African man. This material in this course offers my clarity the extent to which I will understand the study of black feminism. Here, Amadjimbe, unpacked a lot of learning curves for my thoughts and common sense about women's role in politics, economy, and in the society. Her topic was, asso was associated with the African feminism phenomenon that is found primarily active in Africa. As an African, I could relate better from her findings and reach through my experiences in South Africa found. I grew up in Alexander Township, which is situated in the north of Johannesburg. Alexandra has a current population of over 180,000 to 750,000 people in a square mile. Square mile is shut, the uptown CBD. Imagine that, that uh, there's no high rise, it's 750,000 people living there. <coughs> Surrounded by factories and rich suburbs. The township has a lot of cultural and social vibrancy which shape the extent I think about it people. My family was among the people of the township and brought so much diversity as the descendants of the Zulu tribe. My family was headed by my grandmother who was working hard as a breadwinner and taking care of my grandfather that was diagnosed with mental illness. We stayed in a four-room house with my four aunties and two female siblings. In the group of women, me and my grandfather were the only males in the little family. I grew up without a father until I was introduced to him, introduced to him in an early 20s, at an early 20s, for a day. Although knowing my father did not reshape the thought I have about myself today because of the love and nature I received from my mother, aunties, grandmother, and sisters. The place of my father had long been assumed greatly by my grand grandmother in my life, in the house and in the family. She ruled her household with wisdom, firm constitution, and grace. 
I am who I am today because of the resilient support and wisdom. I did not know that my grandmother's character could be termed as a matriarch, and through the observation of what she stood for, on her beliefs about the role of women in politics, economically, and in the society, she was clearly an African feminist, a black feminist for that matter. However, I had not yet got a chance to discuss her knowledge about the African feminism concept or phenomenon, although her life can speak so much about how she was an African feminist. According to Amadou, there were several points at which made the African feminist. An African feminist are historically metrical forces as the majest majestic queens that once rules, ruled nations of Africa with peace and harmony. This was acceptable in the African villages in the period because men and women had their role in the society. Roles were balanced and every gender of every gender male or female contributed in the livelihood of the society. Once again, when I looked at my grandmother's character, there was so much resemblance from which I was testified by Amadume about the history of feminism in Africa. These metrical characters were strong and possessed so much wisdom to protect their community and families. Amadume also emphasizes that such history is important for our understanding of women's roles and contributions in pre-colonial African history. My grandmother, so much of black, or African feminism values had so much of black or African feminism values which were clearly seen from her mother, aunties and sisters personalities. My family is now one of the many second class families in the community. Every member of the family is educated in different academic fields. These were the goals of my grandmother to educate her family because she did not get a chance to study and she aimed at making sure that the children would get the opportunity to learn in her life, she stayed in the rural areas of Wazim Natal, and she was one of the older sisters in her family. Her role was a little bit that of a head boy, and taking care of her father. Her history did not block her to inspire progress for her children and grandchildren. She was able to inspire me, my sisters, and her daughters. So equally through her spirit of black feminism, she had it was not surprising to me to learn that South Africa is one of the countries in Africa that promote the participation of women in politics, economy, and have significant role in the society. According to Hughes, in the study of women in politics and power, nearly half of sub-Saharan African countries used gender quotas in the most recent elections, typically through reserve seats of their parliaments. A handful of ruling political parties have also voluntarily adopted gender quotas. Examples include the African National Congress in South Africa, Front from the Liberation of Mozambique, Filimo in Mozambique, and Southwest Africa's People's Organization, SWAPO in Namibia. Overall, in 2011, sub Saharan African countries with, can with candidate quotas reserved seats of uh, voluntary party quotas had on average of 10% more women in parliament than African countries without gender quotas. That's a problem. My grandmother, mother, aunt and sisters reflect the extent to which my country has been able to promote their role in politics, economy and in society. Indeed, South Africa is such a dynamic country with plenty of opportunities for women since 1994. To this day, my family's females group has reached levels at, at which they are part of historical population. Women are respected. Many of the society believe that women have a place in politics, economy, and society. Furthermore, hey, I love this part. I love this part. Yeah, I finally got her in the pictures. I finally got her in the pictures, but I had to do it. There was a new refreshing experience in my life about women. There are three professors which I view as the opportunity to learn more about the role of women in the society. My academic achievements are shaped and realized through the academic nurturing and discipline upon which my, my professors have exercised on me. There was so much difference between my school days in South Africa and America. This was clear in the extent to which 
there was no male professor in our political studies. I remember clearly in freshman year, as I thought loud that one of my colleagues, the Rotten Tawum, had me and thought that I said a dismissal and an informed statement about the role of women as professors. All I said was, where are male professors in the political science program? This time, I'm ashamed of the statement I said, which had, at the time, had little knowledge about gender in academic institutions, and that the subject of gender has nothing to do with my pursuit learning experience. Here at Johnson C. School University. In South Africa, don't blame me, please. I only was taught by so many male teachers, and there were few female teachers. Remember, even on television, Education still shows as if males are the only preferable gender qualified to teach. Furthermore, most high positions of higher education institutions are held by men. Example, up there in the middle block. Today, I stand at the summit of my academic achievements in the undergraduate institution. In undergraduate institution. Where am I? Well, knowing that, these three female professors have contributed so much to my academic success, discipline, knowledge, and shaped my progressive thoughts about gender issues. Indeed, education is not determined by the extent to which how many males and females stood before you and poured their academic knowledge in the learning process. There were female professors whom, in other terms, were a clear source at which I observed feminism at its best, two of which have strong element of black and African feminism. I resonate better with them because of my background and finding similarities and shared values that make me to be responsible, progressive, and a wise young black man. Therefore, we can all and shall all be black feminists. I'll be black feminists. So thank you very much.